Welcome to the KTA Coding Failure Analysis video training series. This is part four of a six part series that describes the field and laboratory techniques used to determine why there was intercoat delamination of a coating system applied to a concrete floor. Each part is standalone, but when viewed in order, they present the key findings from an actual project. Visual observations alone are often not adequate to determine the extent of potential problems. A coating can appear to be sound and intact, but possess a level of adhesion that will not withstand the abuse and wear that can be expected. Adhesion tests are used by professionals when rendering an opinion as to the, whether a coating should be repaired or replaced. If a coating is repaired, adhesion tests are also used to confirm that the repair material exhibits adequate bond to the existing coating. There are three primary ways to test the adhesion of a coating. All three methods are described in ASTM standards. They are ASTM D3359 adhesion by tape test, D6677 knife adhesion, and D7234 pull off strength of coatings on concrete using portable adhesion testers. The tests are based on two different testing mechanisms and evaluate two different adhesion properties. The tape and knife adhesion tests are used to evaluate the shear or peel strength of a coating, while the pull-off test is used to evaluate a coating's tensile strength or its resistance to a perpendicular pull. ASTM D3359 involves cutting an X or crosshatch pattern into the coating down to the substrate, applying a pressure sensitive tape to the test area and removing it. The amount of coating removed is rated according to an ASTM rating scale from 0 to 5, with 5 representing no coating being removed. ASTM D6677 involves cutting an X through the coating and probing at the cross section. The ease of removal of the coating is rated subjectively on a 0 to 10 scale, with 10 being no removal. Oftentimes it can be difficult to cut through the coating to the concrete for the knife tests, so tensile or pull-off adhesion testing in accordance with ASTM D7234 is done instead. For this job, a hydraulic adhesion tester was used. It requires the attachment of a 2-inch diameter or even a 2-inch square loading fixture to the coating with an epoxy adhesive. If the coating is elastomeric or more than 20 mils thick, it should be scored with a knife or hole saw down to the concrete prior to attaching the loading fixture. In the pump until it catches hold of the pull stub and it'll monitor the rate of pull up here along the top. I don't want to exceed 150 psi per second. So the pull off is 525 psi. Rate the location of break. When documenting the results, record the pull off value in PSI or kilopascals, and the location of the break being adhesive, cohesive, or glue. An adhesive break is a clean split between the coating layers, between the glue and the coating, or down to the concrete surface. A cohesive break is a split within a coating layer or within the concrete substrate. And if the glue or adhesive used to attach the loading fixture to the coating fails, and it represents greater than 50% of the surface of the dolly, then reattachment of the additional loading fixtures may be necessary. Note that while concrete has tremendous uh, compressive strength, it often doesn't possess good tensile strength. So the location of the break is oftentimes within the concrete itself. When this occurs, little information about the adhesive or cohesive properties of the coating system uh, is revealed, other than the fact that the coating adhesion and cohesive strength exceeds the tensile strength of the concrete substrate. The results of the non-filling area 
for 525 PSI with the brake 15% glue, 20% cohesive in the concrete, and 65% cohesive in the original red floor. The new system adhered well to itself and to the existing floor coating. The results in failing areas were essentially zero. The coating failed in the outer layers when starting the test. The knife adhesion testing in failing areas showed that there was poor knife adhesion results in the outer layers, but the rest of the coating was sound and intact, indicating that the interface between the new coating and the old was very good. Knife adhesion tests in non-failing areas showed all coats to be well adherent. As mentioned before, the pull-off test showed similar results between failing and non-failing as the knife. That's it for part four. Log on to ktuniversity.com to see other KTO videos in this series for the collection of background information, other types of hands-on testing used to examine the problem, the methods used to collect samples, and the laboratory analysis undertaken to determine the cause. While you're on the site, you'll also find a listing of other instructional videos that are available for your viewing.